All central lines, irrespective of site, are inserted via the Seldinger technique, which was first described in 1958. This video will describe in detail initially an overview of the technique and then each step in sequence to give a basic framework for the insertion of all central lines on the ICU. The Seldinger technique is conceptually simple. First, a guide wire is placed through an access needle, followed by dilation, cannulation, and guide wire removal, leaving the cannula in place. This video will first break down the stages of the Seldinger technique in detail, and then provide a detailed description of each stage in the context of central venous line insertion. Step 1. Following an appropriate consent, patient positioning, sterile measures, and vessel identification, the first Seldinger step is the placing of a hollow needle into the target vessel, usually under ultrasound guidance. Venous blood should be easily aspirated into the syringe. Some packs may include a plastic cannula, which can be advanced over the needle and into the vein. Step 2. Confirming the blood is venous is not always straightforward. If in doubt, obtaining a blood gas from the sample or transducing the waveform should allow the operator to distinguish venous from arterial flow. Remember, subjective estimates of pulsility on removal of the syringe may be misleading. Veins can be pulsatile in congested states or in tricuspid regurgitation, and arteries less so in low output states. Similarly, for colour, venous blood can be bright if the patient is hyperoxic or the blood is diluted, and arterial blood can look dark in deoxygenated states. The next step is placement of a guide wire through the needle. This can be either following removal of the syringe or directly through specifically designed syringes in some kits. The wire has markers at 10 cm intervals. One mark is 10 cm, two marks is 20 cm and so on. This allows the operator to insert a site appropriate length of wire into the patient. Remember the need to confirm correct placement of the wire prior to the next step. This can be done using ultrasound. A more detailed description of the use of ultrasound in central line placement is contained in a separate video within this learning module. The next step involves the removal of the needle or cannula, leaving the wire in place. Take care at this stage to ensure that the control of the wire is maintained. A small skin incision is made into the skin at the entry site to the wire. Be careful to cut away from the wire to avoid damaging the wire at its insertion point. Take the time to ensure that the wire is actually within the incision and not separated from it by a tag of skin. Taking care at this stage will reap benefits at the next step of dilation. Next, a dilator is advanced over the wire, forming a tract from the skin into the vein. This is a tricky stage, with care required not to kink the wire. To prevent this, ensure that you insert the dilator at the same angle as the initial needle insertion. Maintain constant pressure and control over the dilator by manipulating it close to the skin as shown. Make sure that the wire moves freely within the dilator. The next step involves removal of the dilator, leaving the wire in place. It is at this point that the insertion site will bleed, so have gauze on hand to prevent excessive hematoma formation. The dilator may have a gentle curve on removal, and this is fine, but it should not be frayed, kinked, or damaged. Next, the central line catheter is advanced down the dilated tract, over the wire and into the target vessel. The guide wire must be constantly controlled, 
ensure that the distal end of the guide wire can be secured before advancing the whole catheter into the patient. If not, feed the guide wire back into the central line until it can just be grasped by the operator. Next step, advance the catheter into the patient to the desired position. There should be no resistance felt. The exact number of centimetres depends on the site chosen and this will be covered more in detail later. The guide wire is retrieved with blood being easily aspirated and saline flushed into each lumen. Care should be taken at this stage to prevent air entrainment into the patient. Finally, after confirming that all lumens aspirate and flush, the catheter should be secured in place, the site cleaned and allowed to dry, with an appropriate dressing applied. 